So this place is a maker space, so think about it as a co-working space for inventors. In this place you can build pretty much anything. So this place will attract anybody that makes stuff. We we'll develop a new type of robots that are called Prote, the shape-shifting sailing robots. So they are sailing boats, but they change shape. So it's a soft robotics for the ocean. Uh, so instead of having a fixed boat, the boat is soft and changes shape. So that's a new type of robotics. And so the goal is to develop a new type of boat that's more energy efficient, it's more maneuverable, uh, more safe, and cheaper than the regular boats. And so you can use these boats to measure plastic pollution in the ocean, to measure radioactivity around the nuclear power plant in Japan. Uh, you can use it to uh, measure the temperature, acidity, salinity, and all the things in the ocean to understand climate change. The maker scene in Hong Kong, uh, I would say the maker, as in the maker movement, has been defined in recent years, is quite new uh, in the sense that uh, people will call themselves makers, but they have been makers in, in Hong Kong for a very, very long time. So there is a very, very strong tradition of craftsmanship in Hong Kong. And actually Hong Kong used to be a major industrial hub. This place used to be a metal factory that was upgraded from metal to robotics. The other places where they do a lot of textile, they're looking at upgrading to wearable technologies. A lot of places they used to do electronics or mechatronics appliances, then looking at upgrading to the Internet of Things or smart objects. So in the last 20 years, a lot of industries have migrated from Hong Kong to Shenzhen or Guangzhou or other places in China. And Hong Kong has been losing a lot of this market. But now Hong Kong has decided to invest in innovation and upgrade. Before us, there was a small maker space called the Dim Sum Lab. It's a small maker space in Shangwan, in the central of the city. And Maker Bay is the first large maker space in Hong Kong. Since there's another maker space that has opened, it's called Maker Hive. It's about a little bit smaller than, than this one, and it's uh, less, I mean, let's say, crafty. And you also have the Science and Technology Park, which is the government supported uh, maker space. But uh, What's special about ours is that we are maybe more technical and more hardcore engineer and more like inventor base. And also we are really focused on social and environmental impact and education. The type of people that you can expect to see at Mecca Bay are typically, I would say, two, two types of profile, most of the time. Uh, one would be the hardware entrepreneur. Well, anybody who mixes hardware with software and oftentimes the cloud. Typically they will need a place that has electronics, programming, and mechatronics, so, so that's the kind of thing that we're looking for. The other big uh, demographics that will come at Mecca Bay are students, sometimes very young. So these are the two main demographics. But then we have other demographics. So we have a lot of environmentalists, people who work with environmental technology. We also have refugees because we are a social and environmental makerspace. In fact, we are the first makerspace in the world focused on social and environmental impacts. So um, since April of this year, our main tenant, uh, the person that runs the most space in, the sp in uh, Mecca Bay, uh, the company is called the Looking Glass, like a looking glass. And uh, the name of the, the boss of the company is a good friend of mine. His name is Sean Frayne. And uh, we were together at MIT, and so he studied physics. And uh, his work is to do a lot with optics. So uh, he used to be very interested in how to bring energy to remote places. So he started to design a new type of wind turbines. They are non-rotational, they are vibration wind turbines. So instead of having a, uh, like kind of airplane wings on a rotor, uh, you have a membrane, like a violin cord. And so when the wind blows, the membrane will vibrate and you'll have a magnet between two coils and that would generate electricity. Then he started another company looking at solar energy. But how to bring solar energy into thousands of island countries like the Philippines or Indonesia? And so he built uh, a printer that prints solar panels on demand. So instead of having a, a full factory, you have a printer that prints solar panel on demand at the size and spec that you want. And doing this, he developed a new type of technology to deposit drops of ink on a transparent medium. So same as the solar panel, but think about drops of ink. So he invented 3D printing images. 
not 3D printing objects like we do with plastic, but 3D printing an image so you have drops of ink in a transparent medium so you can actually see the object in 3D. And now what he's working on is to uh, replace the drops of ink by 3D, uh, by three colored LEDs. So you could have a dynamic 3D displays. So all you see is that this is a transition from a simple invention to another and hopping from an innovation to another. And uh, that's a kind of uh, really exciting process that we like to see happen in a makerspace. So very creative, uh, very collaborative, and very uh, new, very new stuff happening. Hola, me llamo César Jarada, tengo 32 y soy medio japonés y medio francés. 